when the slime trail is thick, you know he's close by. The Slime Beast. The 1975 or 1976, depending on which site you look on. Novel by Guy N. Smith. This is one hell of a fun read. But before we get into it, make sure to comment on, like, and share this video. As well as hit the notification bell to be updated every time I make a new video. Like my Facebook fan page and support me on Patreon. Even a dollar a month will go a long way. The links to those two sites will be in the description below. And as always, subscribe. Alright, let's get into this. The Plot a trio of adventure seekers, Professor Lawson, his niece Liz, and their assistant Gavin, are in search for King John's lost treasure. After they arrive, they soon pick something up on their metal detector in the marshlands. While uncovering some items, they soon discover a fierce odor, as well as a creature, one they quickly dub the Slime Beast. However, the beast is still breathing, and soon awakens to stalk the, during the nights on the wash. Moving closer and closer to civilization, the creature has but one thing on its mind. To kill. First off, I gotta say, these so-called scientists can't think of a better name than the slime beast off the top of their heads. It's pretty funny, and I love that it sticks with the creature. It's not like... We'll call it the Slime Beast for now, but we'll dub it something else later. No, it's the Slime Beast. I love it. This book tries to cram as much into itself as possible. There's a fast and very forced love story, a trademark of Guy N. Smith's. A devious professor trying to keep everything undercover. Angry villagers, and on top of all of that... There's the Slime Beast. It may not sound like a lot, but keep in mind, this book is only 105 pages. I mean, it says 111, but it starts on like page 6 or 7, so... Oh, well, it says 110, so it starts on page 5. I will not lie when I say this book is fun. With the capital F. I first read it in pretty much a day, and was engaged. The second time took a little longer due to scheduling and motivation because I was in a drought. It was still as engaging as ever though. The writing is spot on and very descriptive. I didn't hate the characters and the reasoning for what they do does make sense most of the time and the gore is pretty vicious. Professor Lawson's reasoning is a bit off and further pushes the fact that he's insane and willing to do anything to get to the credit he deserves. Always one to enjoy Guy N. Smith's writing, I found this to be the pinnacle of pulp. It has Smith's writing style all over it. Vivid descriptions of the marsh and surrounding town bring warmth to the story that is nice and cozy. The gaggles of geese moving into a V-formation was also a nice touch. Liz and Gavin are the two that fall in love. They have sex and it's like, okay, you were smart about it, you wore protection. Then they have sex again and then it's like, wait, what, what are you doing? Don't, no, ah! Smith does give reasoning behind it, but it's also very flimsy reasoning at that. The people in the village are a pretty angry bunch. There are a couple of in-town sequences at a local pub where they shoo away and come up with crazy ideas to what the trio are doing up at the cabin and where the slime beast came from. Among their reasoning, the ideas that the creature is prehistoric or comes from outer space are brought up, even the main trio are trying to ponder on its origin. One thing that I love about this book and its sequel is that Guy and Smith never fully explains the Slime Beast's origin. 
it leaves it up to the characters and readers to come up with their own theories. My thought is that the slain beast was put there to protect King John's treasure, and if they dig any deeper past the slime beast, that's where the treasure will lie. It's there to protect and defend, in my opinion. As to where it is originally from, I'd love if they if it came from some unknown remote island and some sailors discovered it and managed to capture it. That'd be really cool. The gore we get a woman's breast slashed off, a head ripped off and innards ripped out, and eaten, of course. There's enough blood to satisfy. The slime beast gets plenty of page time and delivers on what we want, which is carnage. But it isn't throughout. In fact, it's more towards the end. But there is enough to satisfy, until the slime beast descends upon the village. This is a fun page-turner. This is a fun page-turner, although it being a short book, there are not many pages to turn. This is the kind of book you'd want to hide from your parents and share it with your friends, at least back in the 70s, I would say that. Looking at it through those kinds of goggles, it's a fun and pulpy story. Looking at it through modern eyes, it's still a fun pulpy story. However, there isn't much to it. We get good gore, sensual sex scenes, reasonably reasonable characters, and a monster that doesn't give a crap and will kill anyone and anything in its path. Even though the gore is good, it's quite minimal compared to Guy and Smith's later books. Sex at inappropriate times and some dumb decisions here and there, as well as the monster that doesn't get much description, thus leading to a few different cover art creature designs. And you have a book that is decent and I'd give it a passing grade no problem. The level of cheese definitely gives it some extra points. Overall, I give the Slime Beast a 3 out of 5. Make sure to comment on, like, and share this video, as well as hit the notification bell to be updated every time I make a new video. Like my Facebook fan page and support me on Patreon, even a dollar a month will go a long way. The links to those two sites will be in the description below, and as always, subscribe.